Talking about crime kind of sucks. <laughs> Season three, baby. <laughs> Season three, no crimes, no criminals. We're the bad boys. That our and crime is lying to you. <laughs> because we are doing crimes. <laughs> Season, th- Season three um, is in spirit only. Well, well, the difference between season one and two and season three is that in season one and two, we were working remotely because of the pandemic, right? That's correct. And now we've, we've production, the production budget is a lot higher. And so we're, we're still in the LA studios because why wouldn't we be? And that's really the, the, the big signifier of season three. You can expect a lot more money going into this podcast because we've got a lot of crazy ideas, a lot of really real you know, wacky stuff. Yeah, and, and we're going to this this new studio space, let me tell you, it's beautiful. And you're going to see a it's lot got of a really hammock. Great things. Yeah, oh, I'm I'm in it right now. I wish I was in it. We only got one. We, we only got a got bag one. chair, but it's it's not near the microphone, so it's kind of a hassle to <laughs> I mean, you could move the beanbag chair. I it's could. Not, you could move the microphone as well, but you're not gonna do that. You're it's you're more of, professional than it's me. Kind it's of just, a hassle. I'm just kind of swaying back and forth here in the hammock, and uh, you know the producers are telling me to talk about something else now, but we don't care. Yeah, the producers, producer every episode, Zach, every hire- episode, <laughs> producers getting fired. <laughs> yeah, if you give me one fucking note, you're done. <laughs> that would be. I mean, and I say would be, it is me in other aspects of life, uh, you know, yeah. cause this is real. Um, how are this you? Real life. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm normal. I'm, I'm good my normal. being just normal. It's pretty good. It's, it is nice. Um, I have done nothing. Have you done anything of interest? Um, have you sorted out the sword of Damocles situation? That's. I think it's fine for now. I don't know. The sword's You've, always there, so yeah. You fastened the rope a little bit tighter, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's some. I got some like fishing line, and I'm using that to hold it up because that's you know a little stronger than just yeah thread. Um, and you got it on a little mechanical arm, swinging back and forth to match you on the hammock. Yeah. Yeah, it's we had, we had to install a mechanical arm in the studio. Yeah, uh, which blew through a large portion of the production budget, which you can't even see. But yeah. uh, it is important to the character. Yeah, it, it is important that the literal sword of Damocles uh, could kill me at any moment. Um, no, yeah, I'm I'm okay. I uh, thought it would be fun to watch like. How many hours was it? Like nine hours of iCarly analysis content, uh, even though I've uh-huh. only seen season one of iCarly. And then after that, I was like, it. it's OK. It's fine. Um, uh-huh. And then I was like, you know what I could also watch is uh, 13 hours mm-hmm. of victorious analysis content. <laughs> Have you seen any of Victoria? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's is the this... kind of week I had. <laughs> Is this at all based on the um, pair phone discussion? I it the it pair wasn't phone extended. I, I know I was ta- well. Don't even get me started about the pair phone <laughs> extended universe. I have learned so much about Nickelodeon shows, um, but no, I don't think so. But I was scroll. I mean, maybe my phone heard me talk about pair phones, and then I was mm. just going through YouTube, and there was the. The iCarly video, and then I was like, "Well, I'm you gonna did watch also this, like I might search well Amazon for Paraphone or something. I don't know what you yeah, did. Yeah, but... that's just <laughs> the algorithm really got me. Uh, yeah. I fucking watched all that shit. It's crazy, man. The, 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 there's like at least three universes that are inter- introduced in iCarly that interconnect with Victorious, like three separate ones, mm-hmm. because it's like it gets meta, and then also like." bizarro world universe yeah in addition to the normal one and also sometimes 
iCarly is a show within other shows in the and the NSU, the Nickelodeon sitcom universe. Um, yeah, Nick it, comms, as Doug would call them. Yeah, it's. I wonder what Doug Walker thinks about iCarly um, or Victorious. It's also I very what funny. Doug that, Walker thinks of the sort of Damocles. Uh, well, he probably wouldn't say much about it because he knows it's it is floating above Doug as well. Um, I think it hit Doug. <laughs> yeah, it like didn't kill him, but it like gave him a concussion. It landed kind of funny. The, just like the hammer of Damocles just bonked him right in the head. It it fell and it just like embedded itself directly down the back of his neck, and that's why all of his line delivery is so stiff. Unless, unless his ad reads, his ad reads are fucking great. Yeah, I watched his ad read for stamps dot com the other day. It's on, okay. It was it was kind of good. It's, he it's, referenced it's the fact better. that he doesn't have eyebrows, and I'm like, all right, you're like self aware. It, it, he he's a little bit more in on the jokes that I think people give him credit for. I'm kind of unironically a Doug Walker's a genius truther. Yeah, yeah. This is the Doug Zone, folks. Um, well, we just did a bonus April Fool's Doug Zone crossover extended universe. Um, yeah, the Cretan Podcast universe is also pretty wacky, much like the Nickelodeon sitcom overlapping universe. in more ways than one. Yeah, and there's only two podcasts in it, so really, how? <laughs> well, three, three, and it could be more. Who knows? Could be more. Bully Buddies isn't in it. No. Nope. Even though I'm referenced in that, so in a lot of ways, it is part of the ex- the extended Cretan Podcast Network universe. Uh, as I am a lore figure, for better or for worse. That's true. You do exist within the lore. What yeah. is that akin to? Um, like if know. my name was in... A book in Minecraft. That would be pretty sick, dude. I, I watched a Minecraft video where it's like it's it's like a meme video where it's just like Minecraft lore and it's like playing this like more intense version of somebody I used to know, and uh, it's just like cutting through like image like this this like conspiratorial Minecraft imagery at a rapid pace, and I was watching it, and it was like trying to convince me that like Enderman and like and Steve might have originated from like the same their original species. And I'm like, I don't know if I can, I'm physically capable of handling the implications of what this what? video is trying to tell me. I've never, well, that's not true. I played Minecraft you in, get, you should get on Minecraft maybe. 2011. Oh, it's such um, a different game now. I know. Um, what is the lore on Steve? Well, the official lore is nothing uh, because I don't think. The, like, the fo- is there infinite Steves and infinite Minecraft universes? Because you can do the whole multiplayer server thing, of course. That's of course, like yeah. The main that's, thing about yeah. it. Um, and you're all Steve, but uh, you make your own character, I guess. Yeah. No, but you're like. Still like a Steve. The thing is, like, with Minecraft, is like, I don't think there's really any actual lore like there's not a whole lot that the developers put into the game and are like this is like you know this is real. actual this is this is we're, we're we're signing this off as real lore they just like put shit into the game and then people are like i guess we're just gonna mm-hmm. make up stuff and some of the stuff they make up is fucking crazy and i'm like they're making good points you know they have their little conspiracy board up and they're they're much threads. like I'm sure Matt does when he's not recording the Doug Zone and, and putting threads on the board and connecting things that are completely unrelated and um, saying if there's something here and you know it's it's compelling stuff. Is it? it I mean, the video I was very I was all right. Yeah, no, they had they had the wither and then it cuts to a, a sandstone block that has like the design of the wither like etched into it, and I was like whoa <laughs> i don't know what that means but that's because cr- the wither truly originates. live in a metaverse no because the the wither originates 
from the nether, which is a different dimension from Uh overworld Minecraft. So how would the people in overworld Minecraft know of the wither if it's etched into fucking sandstone so that implies that it's ancient, Uh right? How would they know of that? That's fucking crazy. The nether used to be part of something else. Hieroglyphics. I know. I, I, again, the implications of that video are destroying me, especially after watching all that fucking <laughs> victorious bullshit. A show I've never watched. <laughs> and now, and now I never get will. into it. No, I'm not. Because <laughs> right. he goes. The guy went through. I mean, it was nine fucking hours. He goes through every episode. Basically, there's no point in me watching it. It's also very funny that, like, of all the people who have been on the show, like, Victoria Justice has had such a nothing career. And, like, she's yeah, primed to. That is. She was the main girl on Victorious, and, like, she had I, been on I other. That much. Right, yeah. And um, she had been on, like, other Nickelodeon sitcoms in the past as, like, guest characters, or, like, she was a main character in Zoe 101, too. And um, she's, like, primed of being, like, the, you know, Miley Cyrus of Nickelodeon or something. Oh my God. There's like a fucking cockroach on my table. Cucaracha. I call Cucaracha. Um, get the How great is f- Miley Cyrus, by the way? Not, <laughs> not that great. I don't She's love her that great. much. She's I kind of love Miley Cyrus. I watched a video of her crying and I wanted to cry as well. The estrogens in the air, I guess. Yeah. She's very upset about Taylor Hawkins dying. Sorry, I had to slay that bug. It was really bugging me. Um, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, but and then, like, of course, they try and make Victoria Justice, like, her character in the show. They try it. The lore is that she's the most talented, bestest person ever. And then, like, uh-huh. Ariana Grande is there. And they, like, completely misuse her, and she barely sings. But when she does, it's, like, never at the same time as Victoria Justice yeah. to, like, potentially upstage her. And then, like, obviously, Ariana Grande is, like, the, the biggest. Yeah. Mu- not the biggest musician of all time she's right now. But, like, top, she's up there. <laughs> she's, like, a top six female artist currently. Yeah. Like, and that could and probably she, change, like, in that top she's six. She's no Doja could, Cat. <laughs> Doja mm-hmm. Cat's no Ariana Grande, all right? <laughs> Doja Cat. Has, Doja Cat wishes she was Ariana Grande. Doja Cat is kind of like the Bam Margera of female music right now. I agree. <laughs> Your I think eyes that's the only. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> that's the smartest thing anyone's ever said. Well, because uh, I thought you were going to say something here, like, "Oh yeah, Doja Cat's secretly amazing," but saying she's the she Bam is, Margera, I'm like, and Bam Margera is amazing. For uh, this is like jackass one, bam, maybe. Yeah. She's was, but got which the means we know that attitude, and she's the best performer other than Johnny Knoxville. Was like, what are you gonna do? Is Ariana Grande Johnny Knoxville? No. Um, Who would be Beyonce? I don't like that. That feels like a really lame answer. Yeah, but it's, it's not Probably. Taylor. Is not Taylor is like um, Aaron McGee. (laughs) (laughs) Who's Steve O? Um, Ariana Grande. Yeah, that tracks. Um, Other female artists exist (laughs) twice. Uh, Meg the Stallion, of course. I think Meg is underrated. I think she kind of rocks. Um, Miley. Miley is fifteen probably... most popular. Billy Eilish should be up there, I would assume. Okay, Billie so Billy Eilish is. Um... Hmm. Okay, so Billie seven Eilish. months ago, popmellow.com dot uh-huh. has an article from top fifteen most popular female I've singers in the world, twenty twenty two. Okay. I haven't read it. Dua Lipa. How do we forget Dua Lipa? Of course. Dua Peep. Um, so, I just want to say that everyone is... Is good. Yeah. All right. Well, so the, the, the list of this for the audience. Olivia, they have... I don't know if this is in any particular order, but this is the order that it's listed in, so I'm just going that way. They have Olivia Rodrigo, 
mm-hmm. who currently has a documentary on Disney Plus that I'm not going to watch. Um, how old Olivia is Olivia Rodrigo, Rodrigo is like um, Steve O's daughter. She is 19. Thank God. Yeah. Um, what? I guess she's she's kind of the the modern Selena Gomez type individual. Yeah. I I think I might like Olivia Rodrigo, but I refuse to listen. Her her music's like because I hear it on the radio, and like I don't like driver's license because it's slow, and you know that I need like a BPM of a certain threshold uh-huh. or I would fall asleep. Yeah, um, 117 from what I've learned. <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably fair. Um, <laughs> so, but other songs on that album are pretty good. Oh, by the way, I was able to pick up a Dua Lipa vinyl. Mm. And it's been... Oh, and I oh I read a new manga this week, too. I've done so many things this week. I've and done you, nothing. Yeah, Billie Eilish is listed at number two, who, again, she has like two songs I like because they're not slow. Dua Lipa yeah. is number three and um, is great. Lisa of Blackpink is number four, which is interesting that... Interesting. Um, I thought, yeah, I think I'm thinking of Ash Nico, but I thought Blackpink was one person. No, Blackpink is was four people, and Lisa. You know, Blackpink is four people. Yeah, uh, it's a little shout out to the bit that I did on the Doug Zone. Oh, I didn't get that far. <laughs> <laughs> I had a busy week at work. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah. I I have not listened to Doom Scroll, okay? So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I've only listened to 20 mm-hmm. minutes of Bully Buddies. Um, give me mm-hmm. a break. Doja Cat, Cat is number five. Then Taylor Swift is number six. Megan the Stallion is number seven. Mm-hmm. Ariana Grande is number eight. Man, that uh, her positions music video where she's in the kitchen, she like clearly has never been in a kitchen before, but it's very hot irregardless, so I don't care. Um, Selena Gomez is number nine. I didn't know she was still making music. Where's the queen of pop, Britney? Um, Is S Z A? Is it SZA? That's number ten. SZA kind of owns Camila Cabello. Camila Cabello. Yeah, I'm gonna get made fun of for not being able to pronounce Spanish words. Nobody who listens to this speaks Spanish except that. Well, um, it's. Mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. wrong um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's the number 11 Demi Lovato uh, it seems a little disingenuous to have Demi Lovato on this list at all considering Demi Lovato is a they them but I'll let that go you consider that Demi Lovato is not good also that yeah wow okay. uh, Saweetie which I think is just sweetie but right that's yeah. Saweetie, I it's think. It's Saweetie? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It stands she, Saweetie. She's 13. Normani is 14. Ava Max is 15. Where's No Name? Hmm? Dua Lipa should be much higher than that. Okay, so this is Ranker.com. It has Ariana Grande as first I and Dua Lipa as enough. second. Doja Cat is third. So the point is, is that my two bays. Are above yours. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> well, Dua Lipa's great. As a certified um, member of the Dua Lipa defense squad. <laughs> I, uh, I have her vinyl. It's good. I don't really listen to pop music is the thing. Yeah, that's I. It's, it's exclusively what I listen to. I know. You're a real pop head. I'm a pop head. I'm a pop L. That's true. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. Well, some uh, people might have heard it on another podcast first, actually, because somebody, well, somebody was jacking some heard swag. It here first. Yeah. That's uh, certainly where some people heard it first was mm-hmm. here, um, mm-hmm. and they might have proliferated that. But you heard it here first. Uh, the manga I was reading this week, which uh, this, uh, give me a second. I'm uh-huh. just going to explain the premise and you're going to go that mm. really tracks for you. So okay. the main guy is like a, he's like a 
scientist like oh, that billionaire really for you. <laughs> Not that part. Uh, he's 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 a, he's like a super rich like corporate scientist guy uh, who's it was like it's like nepotism why he's in the family, but that's not that important. But he hasn't found himself a sweetie, and then one day he meets a girl who okay. is hot, and he falls in tracking. love instantly. And then this is tracking. He, he's so used to women making a move on him because he's just like so like rich and stuff, and like people are falling over to mm-hmm. be with him that he doesn't know how to make a move on her. So he does a background check on this girl who he finds out to mm-hmm. be an assassin. Famously. And so his next logical step is, well, if I want to hang out with her again, obviously I just put a hit on myself mm-hmm. and then we can keep h- hanging out and it'll be cool. Yeah, that, that and that's work. the story. <laughs> and so he like he like uses a bunch of like fake bullshit science to basically make himself invincible. Um, mm. And he has like backup organs and stuff. And so the whole plot of the, the story is just he's gaslighting him. her into thinking she's a bad assassin, but really he's invincible. That, that is a, that is basically a plot point. And she's like, <laughs> what, like what the fuck is this guy's deal? <laughs> it's and like, then other uh, assassins are going after him too, because she can't do the job. And then she ends up protecting him because like he she falls she, in love. Well, no, because she's like, well, I got to, protect my mark from like getting got by somebody else like i have to be the one to do it Mm -hmm. so she's like and she's like i can't figure out how to do it yet because this guy refuses to die despite like being shot or stabbed or blown up or whatever the dude just refuses to die so she tracks him then she kind of notices that well this guy's not that bad why is anybody putting a hit on him and the whole time he's like he 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 i'm the one doing it yeah real smart yeah, it's, it was fun. It's fun little uh, Kiruru Kill Me is the name of the manga. There's only two volumes out in English right now. I give it a recommendation if that sounds somewhat interesting. It's also a little too horny for my tastes. I thought that was every manga. That's not true. Um, I haven't read a single one, so really, no. you don't need to refute me. You can just say no yeah well <laughs> he said yeah guys i win no, shut the got him <laughs> no it's uh it's got him no, like, no no shut up shut up i got you i already got you it's too I late want, oh i'm making a separate point i'm making a separate point is it about manga it's about it's about media in general like do Man. you know in certain things like either maybe games or um or tv shows Kirby. or or have watched uh better call Saul. yeah you know like it characters can be horny for other characters and that feels like normal or like they a character can sexualize another character because that makes sense within like that universe yeah. and it doesn't feel weird but uh-huh. then like a show can just be horny for like the whole everything about the show and mostly the writers like are horny uh-huh. for the character Big mouth. and that feels weird this yeah. this manga fucking rides that line incredibly hard. Like it was the first issue was a dude being like, I want to draw something that I can jack off to. And then he was like, this is kind of good. No, it's it's honestly, it's like almost the other way around. Like the main guy is horny for this, the main girl. And that feels fine. And then like, mm-hmm. there's like one mini chapter where she just puts on like a skimpy sweater and like, that's it. And I'm like, this could, this doesn't need to be here. Like, yeah, th- this sucks. Um, or like another, like there's a secretary character who's interested in the main guy and she fantasizes about him. And I'm like, I guess that makes sense. And another time, it's just like weirdly, it does, it does the fucking like, well, your boobs are bigger than my boobs, blah, 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 kind of fucking anime girl bullshit. And I'm like, this sucks, you know? Bayonetta is a great example of a character being horny as hell, but it doesn't feel like uh-huh. I, I never, when I'm playing Bayonetta, I'm like, Bayonetta is a sexualized character, but it feels like herself. Like she herself is like, she's owning her, own. she's, she's owning her own sexuality. And it never feels like Bayonetta wants to bang me specifically, nor does it feel like the writers want to bang Bayonetta. Uh huh. And I feel like that's fine. 
yeah, non-binary femme fatale character action game protagonist. <laughs> Call that Bayonetta. <laughs> Bayonetta, baby. See, I feel um, like the word economy being bad on purpose is part of the bit there. That's kind of my whole thing. Because I do so, bad word economy. Oh, well, now we're turning back into the Doug zone. The Twitter zone. Woo! Look, it's just the like... Charlie Fox trot zone, who's really the best tweeter. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. He's not. Uh, um, I, it's the funniest fucking thing is to be a 17 year old and say, I need to get my ass smacked right now. <laughs> That's hilarious. We've all been there, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, I don't know. I played Kirby this week. How's that? I like it. I think it's a fun time. I'm, I still haven't beaten the third world but i think i'll play some more later today i am very worried about that little blue fuck Mm -hmm. that little blue exists flying squirrel guy and i think he's gonna betray us that's betray you i think he's Um, gonna betray us all all right mostly kirby (laughs) i refuse to comment Um, and this is a this is a um controversial topic that came up in the discord about kirby yeah they do a post credit gaming sequences and i am anti this behavior i mean it's all it's it's in your defense with kirby games it's all optional however often the post credit sequence will because I've watched many lore videos, because I haven't played all the Kirby games, but of the ones I've played in, uh, from what I've watched in the lore videos that I've watched, is that it's generally a little harder, like the post-game uh-huh. content, and there will usually be some like weird lore bombs or like a, a true understanding of what's really going on kind of a thing. Um, all right. So I, I, and I don't know enough about the forgotten land to really say, I will say this. I prefer the 2d Kirby games in some aspects, as far as like the combat's concerned, because you can do more with the powers because you're not like your inputs are not because they're 2d. You can do an up input or a down input on the controller when you're doing the the beat moves and you can do different things. Whereas with most of the, like, like with most of the copy abilities, instead. yeah, exactly. You have to account for movement. And like a lot of the abilities are just like shoot fireballs. Or yeah. if you're in the air, you can do a fire dash. Um, yeah. Like not all of them are like the hammer ability, which I think is great because there's, diff- there's a decent amount of variety in the different things you can do. Um, I'm a drill main. Drill's fun. I like drawing a circle around a bunch of guys mm-hmm. and they all die. Yeah. I like uh, popping up underneath a guy. Yeah, it's very yeah. fun. Um, this is I'm going to do a mild spoiler. It's not really a spoiler. Yeah, but uh, it is very funny at the end of the game, and it is the end of the game. Yeah, don't tell me it's not just because there's extra stuff. I think I was um, destroyed by Mario Odyssey. Because I played the after credits content of that, and that part sucks. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, Mario Odyssey really falls off once they once you go through the main story and they ask you to do the moon stuff and the all moon, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 I, like, I hate that stuff. Well, and you know, Super Mario Odyssey. It's no masterpiece. It's no, it's no masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really enjoy that game, but I hate the after credits stuff. Uh, so now I don't want to do any after credit stuff ever uh but at the end of kirby so there's like a a dramatic tone shift to like a more serious thing for the final boss section it it do it do it do be like that kirby's like all fun and games then it's like time to kill god yeah really truly i did kill chaos at the end of it Um, (laughs) the the crossover (laughs) i wasn't expecting Jack Garland shows up and he's like, I'm here to kill chaos. And Kirby's like, hi. Uh, I think it's very funny that there's this dramatic tone shift and the music is like kind of metal inspired 
yeah. and it's like industrial um, and it's like dark and gritty a little bit. And then it still has the same like getting a Waddle D animation or <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this upbeat poppy like bubblegum song. And Kirby's and just like doing makes the old baby noises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like immediately after killing this like menacing boss. Um, very funny. It's yeah. just a fun time. It's a good uh, game. It's a good game. I uh, found it too easy, personally. It is. It, well, were you playing on? I was easy, playing on wild the, mode. Uh, how wild is that mode? I have not, no not idea. wild I, enough, honestly. <laughs> I have nothing to compare it to. I I wanted to try spring breeze mode just to be like, what's different here? I remember when me and the sweetie were playing the demo, we started on the spring breeze mode and that I don't remember what the difference was, but it was so easy that we're like, well, we're going to go like we're switching a while. Yeah. This is like, we're also doing co-op. There's no reason to not yeah. to. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's, it's pretty, pretty easy. I mean, finding right. all the secrets and stuff though. That's where I think the actual the secrets are a little bit more difficult than I anticipated it. Yeah, and also getting the the good times on those like bonus gauntlet levels. You yeah. know what I mean? Not that getting the good time is does worth anything. Doing it only gives you more coins that you have so many of. And it's, it's not only worth fifty. It. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> just run another level. I have like I have like fifty five hundred coins. Do you unlock more mini games after the the restaurant? Um, yeah. Because I only have done the like I only have the restaurant unlocked so far, and I like you playing get, that little like diner dash, but not really a game. Yeah, should I spoil the mini games? Yeah, you can spoil the mini games. Uh, there's Kirby fishing, which is pretty cool. I knew that he was. I knew there was fishing. I didn't know if yeah. it was like a a game where you could just park Kirby there and he will pretend to fish. And you're like, wow, he's fishing. That's cute. And that's all it was. You know, it's like yeah, it's like a quick time event game. Yeah, um, same as the restaurant um there's a carnival game that pops up that i didn't play i think it's a labyrinth i think you do a labyrinth okay interesting um not like a running around the labyrinth but like a tilt to the ball no like a like a ball maze Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i think they're called labyrinths officially it's the official name of it david bowie named it r.i.p r.i.p um, speaking of David Bowie, did you watch the Oscars? <laughs> uh, no, I did not. Did, did something happen during the Oscars? Something happened. Um, now, for the folks at home, we know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's Saturday when we're recording this. Yeah. Mere hours ago, um, I referenced will smith at the oscars to someone at work and they Mm. said why is everyone talking about that did something happen and they were being sincere i'm like you're 21 how do you (laughs) how do you not know this how offline are you um it's wild pretty jealous honestly (laughs) (laughs) um yeah he lives like the ideal life for some people um He's a cool guy. I think he's 21, maybe 22. All he does is watch anime. Mm -hmm. Um, Like every conversation I've had with him, he's like, did you watch One Piece? And I'm like, no, I've never seen it. And then he'll reference some other anime. Um, Sounds like like, he just watches like the really long shonen shows that are frankly. No, he watches other stuff. Um, He told me a bunch of them. Uh, I did ask him about that. He said he watched it. Um, he's probably like that is bad. <laughs> I think he like he likes all animes, and he's also um, the kind of guy who is like, I need to spend my entire paycheck before next payday because I'm getting another paycheck then. So, like, why would I need this money anymore? That's certainly one way of it's one way to live your life. Um, yeah. And he he will order pizza a large pizza at 10 a.m. on the dot exactly when they open. 
I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he works overnight, but like, that's too late to be staying up to be ordering pizza. Um, yeah, he's, he's an interesting character, but he does not know about the Will Smith, Chris Rock incident. Well, he's too busy uh, watching those Japanese animes. It's true. He doesn't even know what music is. I, I don't know if he's like trolling me, but every musical reference I've made, he's like, I don't know what that is. I only listen to music in animes. Me? <laughs> <laughs> but you listen to radio bangers. And twice. And that it's is on the radio that somewhere. It. it is true. If, if, um, if twice ever came on the radio, like, it with like, yeah, you know, I was just like normal. Yeah. Normal radio. I would crash my car (laughs) (laughs) on purpose. Yeah. I'd be like, well, it's not going to get better than this. (laughs) They're jacking my swag. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Everyone's fucking jacking my, my twice swag. I invented liking this insanely popular band. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, as far as our friend group is concerned, I did. It's true. I am a bit of a trendsetter. For a, You're a tastemaker, that's for sure. I'm very, yeah, very small scale tastemaker. Back to the video game credit sequence thing, though. Okay. My favorite games, which are the near games, are basically they have like different endings, but really is like you do ending A, like in Near Automata, you play ending a you do the first game run through as one character and then after that ending and you get the credits the game's like there are other endings you should try playing it he 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 he. so you play the game Uh again and then you play as a different character like the same events through a different character's perspective and then you play a third time and then now you're playing as the first character again after the events of the first two Mm. run throughs and then there's like a D and an E ending as well that are sort of the same kind of a thing. So you're, you're just, sometimes credits don't mean the game's over. And that is whack. Um, just put the credits at the end. I don't need to know who... Um, yeah, you're going to do the same bit that you did in the Discord. <laughs> yeah, but I wanted to change the credit. <laughs> but I really think I picked I the funniest who, one the first time. I don't want to know who voiced Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do voiced. Um, can I ask a question about near automata? automata? Yeah. Near tomato. Yeah. Um, is this the video game in which the opening sequence is within the confines of a, a subterranean way? A subway? A train? No. You Do you know that game? game? <laughs> Do you know the game where the opening scene? It's like a Japanese game, I assume, and it's like robots in a subway, and the first like ten minutes is just dialogue options. No, that's not even how near near both near games open up with. Okay, but what's that game? I have no idea. Well, I mean that could be shucks. Robots in a subway. Yeah. It might, honestly, truthfully, it might be Detroit Become Human, but I don't think so. <laughs> no, yeah, no, near near Automata, you, it's like you, it starts up in like a shoot 'em up section. You're just shooting guys, mm. and then near Replicant, uh, you start off fighting guys after right. a cutscene, and you're not underground. So, what's the other David Cage game that's not Heavy Rain or uh, Detroit Become Human? fuck yeah that's the one yeah well the one where elliot page is uh it might be that the elliot page one which name i can't fucking remember god how bad is quantic dream yeah is it quantic dream that's no that's the name of the that's the name of the um i don't think that's the game i'm thinking of i think beyond so he had uh david cage made heavy rain mm-hmm. and then beyond two souls yep. that's the elliot page one Maybe and then that. detroit become human does he have two robot games because detroit become humans a robot game but i think this is more robots 
more robotic and less. I don't think human. I don't think Beyond Two Souls is a robot game. And then he has right. some demos for things that are Bad. robot subway game. I don't I don't know if you'll be able to find it. Um, while you look that up, I'm going to talk about a crime that okay. occurred from an Oscar winner. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, that man's name, and it is a man, Mm -hmm. Willard Smith, and get this. What'd he do? Aggravated assault. No. Yep. You know when this happened? When? 1989. Oh, see, you're making us think you're doing the Oscars, but then you, uh... (laughs) A you little did a switcheroo. little switcheroo. The classic this bad is... boy crimes deception, one might say. Truly, I am like Toby Fox. I'm subverting your expectations. Um, <laughs> now this... Except, uh, Toby Fox. My expectations were never subverted by him. Uh, my expectations were consistently subverted by him. Did you play um, Undertale? Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. We all the flower. Oh, we all played Undertale. We all played uh, Toriel because she's the two Toriel. Toby, <laughs> no, Toby. <laughs> um, what if we start saying Toby every time we subvert expectations on the podcast? <laughs> I would hate that. Because I mean, uh, as somebody who read Homestuck and knowing that Toby Fox did a lot of the like music for it and like how obviously inspired by homestuck and earthbound undertale was i was like well all of this just like this makes sense yeah and also like meta humor i don't like meta humor that much but that's fine I love it. it's fine it's great Whatever. Um, i'm a little too smart anyway, for it but it's 1989 fine. in philadelphia born and raised <laughs> born and raised willard smith his name is willard um well that got explains it. a lot yeah Maybe Jada wouldn't fuck other people if his name was William. Mm. Um, I refuse my, to comment. My bad boy is Jada <laughs> for being bald. <laughs> Truly one of the worst crimes. Uh, uh, Chris commit. Rock was... <laughs> he was right to say something. He was right. She is bald. Um, which is not even what he said. Uh, so he got into an argument with a record promoter by the name of William Hendricks. A little bit of jealousy there, perhaps. Perhaps a little projecting. Yeah. Um, Now, Willard told his bodyguard to beat up William Hendricks, which ended up being so brutal that he was left nearly blind in one eye due to a fracture to his eye orbit. Uh Uh-oh. So, Willard Smith convicted convicted of aggravated assault, reckless endangering of another person, and criminal conspiracy. Uh, Now, the charges were dropped, but he was convicted. Therefore, he's a criminal. Um, And he did spend a night in a cell where other cellmates were constantly waking him up for autographs. (laughs) And he calls it the worst night of his life. Maintains his (laughs) innocence to this day, stating in 2005... That his friend beat up Hendrix while he was just there and had no involvement. Um, I wonder what the second worst night of his life is. <laughs> Perhaps it was when he realized he starred in Wild Wild West. Um, and what was like the movie he movie. was in where it was he was fighting himself? Uh, it, Gemini it Man? Of, yeah. That was bad, yeah. right? I was trying to think of a bad Will Smith movie, but instead I said Wild Wild West, which is an incredible film. You know what's a good Will Smith movie? Hitch. Mm hmm. That movie rules. You know how. Um, I'm not going to do this bit. Never mind. No, do it. <laughs> it's a bit that I've already done. That was a good bit. Honestly, I may have said it during the first time I did the bit of how every movie is just every good movie is a combination of two other movies. Yeah, we've done that. Yeah. Fever hitch. 
Okay, what does that look like? I don't know. <laughs> is Fever Pitch a baseball movie? I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a movie guy. <laughs> uh, it sounds like a baseball movie. What if you combine video game concepts like uh, Super Kirby Odyssey? What would that look like? Mm, Super Kirby Odyssey would be uh, Kirby the Forgotten Land, but it's not a masterpiece. Mm. That's a Mm. a joke for uh, nobody else. Yeah, it's a joke for you. It's a joke Uh, for me and maybe Joseph Anderson if he's listening. Joseph, uh, come on the cast. Explain why you haven't uh, finished the Witcher 3 video. I get it. It's a long game. I couldn't get past the tutorial. You had to jump really high. (laughs) That's how I've been feeling about Fortnite. Like, uh, cause they got rid of building. Right. And I don't usually build, but like they also got rid of a lot of things that you would use to like get to higher areas mm-hmm. like normally. And yeah. so I was like, oh, how the fuck am I supposed to get up here? And this one kid in my Twitch chat was like, red you, Bull. you climb. No, we're not red bull. Unfortunately. Um, although one of my friends asked if red bull ever made his way back into the discord. And that was a, that Solid no. no. <laughs> um, I mean, he's not banned. He could just join again, but I don't think he knows that. Uh, did you know that Fever Pitch stars Drew Barrymore and Jimmy Fallon? He's a leading rom-com actor. I had no idea Jimmy Fallon was capable of that. I don't think that he is. <laughs> I also don't think Drew Barrymore is cute. I think Drew Barrymore. Granted, actually, she's like fifty, oh, but she's even, older than that. She's forty-seven. Um, so actually, she was younger than that. But even like <laughs> younger, I was never like, oh yeah, Drew Barrymore is a bay. She's like, I was like, yeah, she exists. She's really good in ET. She's like a child in that, right? Yeah, she's six. You yeah, know. so that's rough for you to say. <laughs> I said she was good. Wait, she she's in good. Family I... Guy? Who the fuck does she play in Family Guy? Um, Everybody. No, what the fuck? Um, Jillian Russell? I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. Yeah. Oh, she was just in Ms. an episode. Lockhart. Why were they she's... saying... She's in 12 episodes in the video game. I can't believe Lois is actually voiced by a woman. (laughs) I thought that was Seth MacFarlane. I, yeah, well, I thought it was, I thought it was somebody doing a, a voice and not, uh, not an actual one. I mean, good. Lois. Yeah. That's Um, that's what she sounds like. (laughs) (laughs) Supposed to be Marge Simpson. (laughs) It's also not a good Marge Simpson. Um, uh, she was in Freddy Got Fingered? Really? Mm-hmm. As a classic film, actually. It's got Rip Torn. Why does Tom Green look like that? He's Canadian. Uh, yeah, it tracks. What the fuck does that mean? No, I just thought it would bug you. <laughs> it did. <laughs> um, yeah, he was married to Drew Barrymore. Ew. For one year, 2001 to 2002. Have you gotten any? Well, I'm, actually, I'm not going to finish saying what I was going to say. I'll, I'll type Thank in. you. All right. Um, yeah, so that was my crime. It was Willard Smith, Aggravator Assault, Oscar winner. Um, what is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was just I was I looked at something and that came to mind and I thought I would say okay. it and I thought maybe so it's I not related to anything real. No. Well, okay. What's what is real if you think about it? As a country, um, what? Oh, uh, well, spicy. Is it a country? Is it a continent? Um, I'm gonna have to talk like to you China, about that. It is a continent. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. I'm going to have to talk to you about that uh, comment afterwards. Um, I'm sure we have some things to talk about regarding that uh-huh. comment. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, well, Secret Spice, do you have a crime? I do. It's on my phone. Um, so I was, because you know how I, I was doing Russia and then and then Ukraine crimes uh-huh. last month. But now the uh, war is over, so we're the gonna, war is well the month's over. Pivot, so we're um, going to pivot gimmicks. I I said that's enough. I'm going to do something different now. Um, and, and we're glad. I was thinking, you know, because I go through and I'm like, well, what countries would be funny? And we've done Japan, you know, mm-hmm. we've done Australia. I think those are the ob- other than the United States. Those are like the obvious three where like, oh, something silly something could have happened. Wacky. Yeah. And then I was like, well, you know what people I've only had exclusively bad interactions with online? Oh, I think I know. Brazilians. I knew it. Because and this is not this isn't like a thing, but like playing certain online games that have a large Brazilian contingent mm-hmm. sucks because they're not nice and their internet's terrible. <laughs> I I you know, I was worried you're gonna be racist. But yeah. now that you have been racist, I'm it's on not board. racist. It's just <laughs> It's, I don't, it's, you know, I'm sure there are some fine Brazilian people out there. I just have not met them playing Awesome Knots. I have not met them playing uh, Rocket League either. Oh. Um, I grew up playing games with is, Brazilians. Is this, is this a stereotype or is this just like something I invented? No, it's a thing that I noticed as like a 12 year old playing MMOs. Um, I typed the Brazilian gamers and Google the, the next thing was Brazilian gamers are the worst. Yeah. Ja, 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 <laughs> the ja. first thing is what is wrong with Brazilians in multiplayer games? <laughs> They're always laughing at you. <laughs> They're always uh, laughing. Um, I almost did a Brazilian. That is today. fucking funny. Okay. I'm glad Wow, it's like a there is there is absolute okay. So there's absolute. This isn't just a me thing that people do not like Brazilians in online video games for some reason. Yeah, I'm not going to go through the reasons because that doesn't. They're seem always like laughing. Fun. That's, that's they, not they're, a problem. they're always hitting you with the ja ja ja, which is fun, but like the first time and not. You know they kill you and then they hit you with a ja ja ja, and you're just like, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. You know it's not a girl doing that. No, no. Girls don't get kills in video games. <laughs> I was gonna say they're not rude, but uh, you know, um, hey, you said it on me. Uh, so I'm, you know, I'm we're woke. Good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Sure. So Thank I you. was looking at Brazilian crimes because I was like, maybe there will be something funny there. You know, yeah. I did the same <laughs> thing this morning, and I. <laughs> A serial killer who only killed children in Brazil. And I'm like, I don't want to do this one. Yeah, I didn't find that. Um, I found uh, this is the best I could find. So this is going to be like a one minute crime of nothing. And we could go back to talking about how rotten Brazilians are in online video games. Um, But so the first thing that came up was Elise Matsunaga who you have your pop filter on your nose. So you look like like a clown, but like with a black nose instead of a red one, which is a dark image. (laughs) Like a monochromatic (laughs) clown, which I don't like. Um, Well, I'm trying to do a visual bit to distract you while you do the gimmick. Well, and the, the gimmick is this. So this lady has a, Netflix not special because that makes it sound like she's a stand-up comedian but she has a mm-hmm. mini true crime docu-series about herself uh, I guess her thing is called Once Upon a Crime that's um, pretty good we should steal that actually season <laughs> that 3 we're rebranding <laughs> bad boy what, once upon a bad boy crime <laughs> <laughs> there, that's the name of the episode congrats we um, did it I, I said it I said it, and then people back home will be like, he said the thing. Stop doing the clown nose. <laughs> um, it doesn't work very well. It's a, it's a solely visual bit that I, I'm doing my best to communicate to the audience. Um, what you should be doing is ignoring it. Well, yeah, I should be just reading my phone. Um, 
<laughs> so I guess they're interviewing her in this docu series, and like the crime itself isn't that interesting. It's like her and her husband were having dinner at home when the couple got into an argument over evidence that the wife had obtained from a private investigator that showed her husband was having an affair. Can um, I just say, if you hire a private investigator, get divorced. <laughs> yeah, if you're already at that point, you're done. Like, there's you're not going to find anything good, or you're just going to waste your money. Yeah, and then you should be divorced for being fiscally irresponsible and not trusting your partner, which is a bad thing to do. You should trust your partner unless I they're cheating, do. and then you shouldn't. So you... don't trust anyone. Look, hire uh, us. We won't do any investigation, but we'll. We have a certified life coach on staff, <laughs> and um, I'm good at reading vibes. Yeah, I think between the two of us, we could put probably figure out what's your, going on. <laughs> put me in a room with your sus- suspicious spouse, and uh, we'll get it sorted. Yeah, one way or the other, something will happen. And maybe just something will happen a little bit like this, where after their little fight, or perhaps more accurately during their fight, the wife grabs a gun from another room and shoots her husband in the head, killing him, which a headshot in that kind of domestic dispute seems weird. It's aggressive for sure. It's like, well, if I was really upset, I would probably not, go for a headshot you know like not that i would shoot anybody anyway but if i was like in my head i'm putting my myself in the shoes of this lady Uh i would be so mad i would not be able to like focus my mind enough to be like headshot i would probably shoot like a few rounds at the chest that is what i think the shoot around above them aiming for the string holding the sort of damocles now that's yeah well i would do that on accident and it also it would i would shoot miss and then the bullet would bounce around the room cartoonishly until it Mm -hmm. hits the exact weakest part of the thing and you just slowly watch the string snap and then it kills me that would be funny um but that's not what happened uh she shoots him and then afterwards she cut his body into pieces and then loaded the pieces into the trash bags and disposed of them on the side of the road which what the fuck is up with that? If you're chopping up, yeah. like put the body pieces in different spots. Should Don't put just it all put in one bag. Uh, I think in multiple bags because it's okay. like you know the torso is probably one bag on by itself, right? And then the yeah, legs, I guess for weight purposes, you, it's probably kind of... like three or four. You know, I think the arms you could probably put into one. Yeah. Maybe you put the head with your other trash, the torso, that is that's by itself. And the legs mm-hmm. might also you probably you probably do the legs in one bag too. Yeah, you just do them crisscross applesauce in the yeah. bag. Yeah. You, you might, you might like, have to like chop the chop them at the knee, you know, so you can you kind of have just, match sticks. You just crisscross applesauce them Crisscross and then, applesauce, uh, it's fine. Unless well, you get the rigor mortis, I don't know enough about bodies. Um, so yeah, and then like, what? okay, so this doesn't even make any sense. So security okay. camera footage from their apartment building shows the wife wheeling suitcases into an elevator, which authorities later found out were filled with plastic bags containing her husband's body parts. And then like, then she went back and just like, without the suitcases, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I feel Put like the you, suitcases on a flight that you don't take. That would be funny, but like you'd be putting it under your name, so it would. Well, use a fake caught. name. They, I, uh, how strict is the TSA in Brazil? Let's well, be that's a here. good point. They never they had nine eleven. They don't check. Oh, we know they do check your. Well, at, at U.S. airports, they check your ID when you check a bag. What if you bring but, a bag into the luggage claim and you just put it on a little carousel and walk the fuck away? That would be weird. People would <laughs> notice you. You're supposed to take bags. So if somebody would inevitably notice somebody walking up and placing a bag there, 
Yeah, you just say to the guy next to you, "This isn't my fucking bag." Uh- <laughs> Yeah, you 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 figure out where the camera is. You turn and face it and go, "This is not my bag. My mistake." And then you place it on the thing and go, "Farewell, adios." Um, yeah, and then uh, you're that good. one looks suspicious at all. Yeah, you're good. No one's gonna check. What do they hire a private investigator to see who's picking up and putting down luggage? This is so fucking weird. So her prison sentence is only 16 years. That which feels like a lot. It, I mean, it'd be 25 to life here. For a crime of passion? I mean, it's a headshot. <laughs> That's a crime of passion. And then she also cut up the body and tried to hide. Uh, you know, like there's enough going on I mean, here where yeah, I'm like. You got to. Man, you're right. Don't commit a crime while you're committing a crime. Yeah, and it's double jeopardy. Uh, it was originally 19 years and 11 months, but it was reduced to 16. And then apparently also she's allowed to be released for like a week at a time, which is how she filmed this Netflix thing. Um, and this is this is a great quote. She says, I know there are people who understand what happened. I know there are people who despise me. And I know there are people who judge me, and that's fine. That's their opinion. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It, well, true. you did kill your husband. <laughs> you are a murderer. You are a murderer. So, I mean, that's not their opinion. Like, that happened. And also, the court agrees that you did do it. Um, let's see. Apparently, their marriage was good. Mm-hmm. And, then Sounds it, good. and then it was bad. Mm, can't have that. And he was apparently gaslighting her into thinking that she, he, she was sus. And he was like, uh, your perception of reality is wrong and you're delusional, which is you're things you say to gaslight some kind of a real pabo, honestly. Uh, they don't also. Okay. So he did, uh, according to her, the okay. husband threatened to have her committed to a mental institution. If she tried to divorce him and take custody of their daughter, when she had provided the private investigator footage of him, having the affair. Mm-hmm. So maybe uh Elise maybe the real bad guy was the fucking husband. Yeah. Folks, vote now on your phones. If, if you were going to say Jada was the bad boy of the week, this husband has to be the bad boy of the week for similar reasons. He's presumably bald. He's got no head at all. <laughs> <laughs> Chopped yeah. his whole body off. Yeah, he's got nothing. I mean, this this happened ages ago. He's just a skeleton. Mm-hmm. If or Ash, could you know, be. Could be. I don't know. I don't know if he was cremated. Folks, do some research yourself. Let us know in the Discord. <laughs> was he cremated? Yeah, I would be interested to know. If you find that out, please let us know. Bad boy uh, crimes. We don't do the research, so you have to. But here's something you cannot research, Alligator Man. Uh, I, we had to talk about the Will Smith thing. So. I, it's, it's, it's in the news. It's in the ether right now. You got to talk about Willard Smith. And then you got to do the little bait and switch of the secret little aggravated assault from 1989. It's a fun little thing. Is the real is the real title of this episode the worst night of Will Smith's life? Yes. Yeah, because that the clickbait there is woo is off the charts, and then in that you know that third act twist of actually actually it was not what you're thinking of. He was and in it, prison, much like the uh, third act twist of the Fast Pass video by Defunct Land, which mm-hmm. I cannot recommend enough. Great, great I watched video. twenty minutes of it. You got to get to the. You got to get to the twist. It'll I blow might. your. It'll blow your dick off. Perfect. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that's the episode. Yeah, Alligator Man next week for sure. This like you have to do the Will Smith thing. That's just yeah, we had to. No bit. Sincerely, you have to do the Will Smith thing. Um. And these are the crimes that you don't hear anywhere else because 
I was like, Will Smith had to have done a different crime that I can accuse him of doing. And every day, if you Google like Will Smith arrested, it's all about the Oscars. Every every fucking article. So you I had to, to do some. Gen- I had to go to page two of Google. All right. <laughs> Don't even question the commitment I have to this show. Uh, well, when you say you did it, I think you mean our interns did it at the Bad Boy Crime Studios look, in L.A. We we agreed we, to not pay them an exposure. They're getting $8 a day. So I didn't want to good. give them any credit. I didn't want to give them any credit. In L.A., $8? Yeah. American? Yeah. It's pretty good. Pretty good. You, they work one hour. That's they it. Are, they are homeless. Um, mm-hmm. And it'll stay that way. Well, we're we, doing our best to help them because we could be giving them no money. That's true. We yeah. could be paying them an exposure. Um, which is why you'll never hear their names. And Zach, you're fired, first of all. <sighs> no, we've had them for so long. That it's for an hour and been in six the background. minutes. Um, yeah, Zach's fired. Craig fired. Uh, Kevin fired. Who will we hire next week? And who will we fire? Stay tuned. Maybe it'll be crimes. me. <laughs> yeah, I just replaced you with Jillian. <laughs> <laughs> the Dream Podcast. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night.